welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me for my review of Double Zeta Gundam, the third Gundam series. Now, before I move any further, I do need to address Double Zeta's reputation, namely its reputation for being more comedic than a typical Gundam series. Uh, and I understand why folks have that impression. Um, the earlier uh, Gundam series, Zeta Gundam, was quite dark and has one of the darkest endings like in anime. And when Tomino was done with that, he kind of got tired of the fact that all mecha had been very dark and, and not just dark, but just very depressing and had this, this very, um, uh, just, just dark tone to it. And he wanted to make mecha, a mecha series that was, it still addressed interesting issues and it was still a full scale mecha series, but that was lighter in tone and, and it could be more fun. So, especially for the first uh, third or so of Double Zeta, he kept the tone lighter, there's a bit more comedy, and it's just not about people wrestling with terrible psychological issues for that first chunk of the story. Uh, it's more adventure -y. And so fans came into this and said, what the heck is going on here? Um, so Double Zeta got that reputation, but it's not as extreme as a lot of folks would have you think. It's not like Double Zeta is suddenly Excel Saga or Lucky Star. Uh, it's just somewhat lighter in tone with a bit more comedy, a bit more overt comedy in its earlier episodes than most Gundam series have in their um, uh, opening episodes. Um, but again, you just have to kind of uh, accept the fact that it's not going to be browbeating psychological issues for the first eight episodes. So Double Zeta tells the story of Judo Ashta and his friends who are... Uh, a, a bunch of teenagers living in the slums of a colony on side one. So they're all basically like street rats who uh, uh, run around uh, repairing things for a, a couple, a bit of extra money. And they end up getting involved with some of the characters from, from Zeta, some of the few who survive. Um, and I'm not going to spoil any of that. But uh, they end up getting involved with that. And so it's sort of some of these uh, more military characters with these sort of street rats who are um, uh, you know, working with them. Judo is a new type, and so it starts dealing with some of those new type issues. And Judo is a very, very good pilot, mainly because he's been living on his own and having to do all this stuff with, with scrap and with half-repaired machines and so forth. And uh, of course, Zeon tries to rise again. So there's this whole, uh, you know, the main plot line uh, focuses on the, the rise of Neo Zeon led by Haman Karn and some, some new villains. So um, I want to talk about some of the characters before I go any further, particularly Judo Ashta. And I really like Judo, not just in the sense of, of enjoying the character, but I actually look up to him more than I look up to a lot of other Gundam heroes because he's a more, um, shall we say, mentally well-adjusted character than you often see in, in Mecha stories. Unfortunately, Mecha has tended to rely on the stereotype that the main character has lots of issues that he has to deal with. And Judo is not by no means a perfect person, but he's much more balanced. He doesn't have the issues of, say, a, a Camille. He doesn't have the hair trigger temper of Camille or the, you know, the weird sort of... Amaro takes offense at people really easily in, in weird ways. Anyway, um, he doesn't have those particular issues. Uh, he is very energetic and he does like to just get stuff done because he kind of has had to. Uh, and he has the street smarts that while he sometimes does leap in where angels fear to tread, it's a calculated risk. He's doing that because he knows that fortune favors the bold. He's not doing it because he's suddenly offended by something somebody has said. Um, so Judo is someone you can actually look up to more than you can look up to a lot of these, uh, these mecha pilots. And as such, um, in a lot of ways, he's more fun to watch because um, he's someone where, you know, I feel like I would make decisions more like Judo would than like Amuro or Camille or some of the other characters in Gundam. Uh, so that just makes it a little easier to, to follow along with the story. Uh, moving over to, to the villain side, you have the leader of Neo Zeon, Haman Karn. Haman's one of the scariest villains I've ever seen in anime, mainly because she is basically a Terminator. She has a single goal bring Neo Zeon back to forefront with her as the leader. And she will not stop. She will not rest. She will just keep on pushing towards that goal. And she's smart. And she's gathered all these resources to do that. And so she is just this 
incredibly focused character. And it's very rare in anime to see, to see a character, especially a villain, with this much focus, this much determination, and these many resources, who doesn't have a lot of psychological hang-ups. It's, it's so common to throw in, you know, a lot of uh, weaknesses for these characters. And she doesn't really have any. She just pushes on with things and just goes and goes and goes. So she's a, a, a perfect villain for a story like that, where you're just, you're, you kind of don't know how to stop her other than just killing her. And she's smart enough that she's not going to make that easy for you. So great villain there. Then there's Glemmy Toto, who is the Char clone. Now he's not literally a clone of Char, but he is clearly, he, he is clearly filling that hole that Char would have been in if Char hadn't been removed for Char's counterattack. And so, unfortunately, Glemmy doesn't have much of a personality. Now, fortunately, the writers did a very smart thing with Glemmy. Um, as it became clear that Glemmy really was being pulled along by the tide of the story, they had some stuff happen to him about halfway through that really changed his perspective on things. And so he leaves for a while and then comes back as a significantly changed person. And he's really um, changed his philosophy and become a significantly different personality and significantly different driving force in the story as a result of those experiences. So I think it's a very smart way of handling it. Realizing your character isn't working, so sort of traumatizing him and then removing him so he comes back as a fresh character with uh, sort of a fresh perspective on things. So good on them for that. Um, I also want to mention LP Peru. Now, apparently, LP Peru is a play on words on, for the title of a popular Lolicon hentai magazine of the time. Um, now fortunately, before you go, you know, you get too weirded out here, um, there's nothing sexual about LP or any of her relationships or so forth. Um, she does like to take baths, though. So there are a fair number of scenes where she's naked. And there's a scene later on, again, no spoilers here, where LP wakes up in this laboratory um, and she's naked. And there's this like three minute scene where she wakes up and gets up and walks around and talks to the other person in the laboratory completely naked. And it's not that the, the artists chose particularly lascivious camera angles or anything. Um, she just happens to not be wearing any clothes. And it's just strange to see that being done to a girl who is clearly like eight years old. Um, but there's nothing sexual about it. So it's just, it is off-putting. And it really doesn't feel, it really doesn't feel innocent. You know, in the sense that, oh, she's just, you know, there's a little bit of, uh, of nudity here. You know, here's a little girl in a, in a bath for whatever reason. Because it comes up enough times that it's just kind of like, that's strange. And I'm, by, by enough times, I'm saying half a dozen. But it's still just weird. So be aware of that. Um, and like I said, fortunately, there's... She has no sexual interest in anyone. No one has any sexual interest in her at all. So that, at least they don't go there. Um, and they do interesting things with her character. She becomes a pivotal character uh, in, the, in the second half of the series. And they do some really dramatic, some really rough, um, uh, emotionally tough sequences with, uh, involving LP Peru. So you know, good on them there for really using that character to her fullest. Um, there are also some other references in Double Zeta to earlier Gundam series, that's all I'm going to say, but you will see some bits and pieces sort of woven in if you've seen the, the earlier series, so you can look forward to that. Uh, so the plot does build up to this dramatic showdown involving Neo Zeon, um, and th the last half of the series is quite dramatic, quite serious. Uh, the ending is a full-scale Gundam battle, with lots of people you know, flying around with giant robots trying to kill each other. Uh, and the final battle has one of my favorite deaths in Gundam. It is a stunningly well-crafted showdown between characters in terms of who's there, why they're there, what they do, you know, how things happen in what sequence and what people say. Perfectly, perfectly done. Um, unfortunately, that final battle is marred by some continuity problems, and it's just it's kind of messy. There's a lot going on. It's easy to get lost. And there are some moments where it's like, that was over there, and it was moving in that direction, and we saw it over there, now it's back there again? That doesn't make any sense. So there's some of that going on as well. Uh, it feels a little rushed. But that comes at the culmination of a fully entertaining show. 
Indeed, there's an episode halfway through, which I would put up against any other episode of Gundam in terms of being intense and emotionally involving. It's one of those episodes where I was completely sucked in and totally engaged for the entire 24 minutes of that episode. Uh, just wonderfully, you know, structured direction, everything else was, was totally there. And delivering on, uh, elements that were hinted earlier on and then adding new stuff that, that sort of opens up your mind and say, oh my gosh, now they're going in that direction. So th there's some very impressive work done throughout Double Zeta. You just have to be aware that it is going to be lighter in tone earlier on. There's going to be some, a little bit of goofiness in the first, uh, eight or ten episodes or so. Uh, it, but so what? And uh, unfortunately, some folks are a little become kind of purists about this and uh, and are frustrated because of, of that. But you know, Gundam is robust enough to handle that, and it's not that that's bad. It's just lighthearted. We can live with that. So those are my thoughts on Double Zeta Gundam. And uh, if you'd like to talk about Double Zeta Gundam or any other uh, anime like that, please stop by otakunovideo.net where we talk about interesting anime and manga. Head over to streamsuki.com. A lot of Gundam is now streamed online, so head over there to see if uh, Devil Zeta is available streaming uh, in your region. And that's it for this. Thanks for watching, and until next time, uh, may you find a Gundam that fits you very well.